السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الكلام كلام الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد أيها الإخوة Indeed the topic of the affair of the description of Jannah and Nar is from the most important of the topics that Ahlul Sunnah will study since it is from the i'tiqad and from the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created Jannah and has created Nar and that both destinations will have their inhabitants and the one who rejects the belief in Jannah or Nar is without doubt a kafir Al-Imam Al-Tahawi rahimahullahu ta'ala he mentions in his Aqeedah Tahawiyya وَالْجَنَّةُ وَالنَّارُ مَخْلُوقَتَانِ لَا تَفْنَيَانِ أَبَدًا وَلَا تَبِيدَانِ He said that Jannah and Nar are both created. Yani that they're created and that they exist, they're present. لَا تَفْنَيَانِ أَبَدًا وَلَا تَبِيدَانِ That they will never cease to exist, neither will they come to an end. That is the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that Allah Azza wa Jal has created Jannah, has created the Nar, and the two of them exist. Bal, from the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that the, the Jannah and the Nar were created before the creation, yani before human beings existed. He mentions, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, فإن الله تعالى خلق الجنة والنار قبل الخلق. He said for indeed Jannah and the Nar Allah Azza wa Jal created them before the creation. He said that Allah Azza wa Jal created them before the creation and they exist now. وخلق لهما خلقا. And he has created for them creation. That is individuals who will fill them both. He mentions, rahimahullah ta'ala, فَمَنْ كَانَ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ أَوْ فَمِنْهُ فَضْلًا مِنْ وَمَنْ كَانَ إِلَى النَّارِ فَعَدْلًا مِنْ Whomsoever from among them enters the Jannah, then it is a virtue from him. And whomsoever from among them enters the Nar, then it is Adlan Min, it is justice from him. And that then is the belief of Ahlul Sunnah. That anyone who enters any of those two places, it is unvirtual by virtue of one of those two things. Anyone who enters Jannah, then he enters Jannah from the Father of Allah Azza wa Jal and from his virtue. 
And anyone who enters the nar, then he enters the nar based upon the adl of Allah Azza wa Jal and his justice. No one will be oppressed Yawm Al-Qiyamah. If you enter Jannah, Ya Abdullah, then know that this is virtue from Allah. This is not an exchange for your deeds. Your deeds are not a substitute for Jannah. Rather, Allah Azza wa Jal enters individuals into Jannah on the basis of fadl, of virtue. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that none of you will enter Jannah by his actions. And so the companions, they asked, Wala anta ya Rasulallah? Not even you, O Messenger of Allah, he said, Wala ana. Illa an yatagammadani Allahu bi fadlin minhu. He said, Not even me. Except that Allah Azza wa Jal overcome me. And encompass me with virtue from him. With fadl. Walakin saddidu. But you should do that which is right. That which is correct. Yeah, and he worked the actions and carry out the actions of Ahl al-Jannah. <coughs> and supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal that he makes you from its inhabitants. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us all from its inhabitants. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal and we seek refuge in Allah from the nar. And that he distances us from the ways and the means that lead to it. Ayyuhal Ikhwah, you I'm sure have heard throughout today's session and the varying lectures that have taken place a mention of al-maut, a mention of death. Allah Azza wa Jal, when he discusses the affair of death in the Quran, he mentions death and follows it with a mention of what comes after it. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُهْزِ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاسِ Allah Azza wa Jal mentions every soul shall taste death. And indeed you will be recompensed and given your reward on Yom Al-Qiyamah. Recompensed for your deeds. Whatever it is you used to do, you will be recompensed. Yom Al-Qiyamah. فَمَنْ زُهْزِ عَنِ النَّارِ And so whomsoever escapes the fire, no doubt, Ikhwan, you're aware of the Sirat and the bridge that bridge that is over the hellfire that has kalalib, has hooks and prongs and thorns, and that it is slippery and sharper than a sword. Indeed, Ayyuhal Ikhwa, the one who passes the bridge over the hellfire and escapes being caught by those hooks and being dragged into Jahannam فَقَدْ فَاز then there is no doubt he is successful brothers and sisters after mentioning the affair of maut Allah mentions the two destinations فَمَنْ زُهْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ Whomsoever escapes the nar and enters Jannah. Allah Azza wa Jal informs us of the fact that these two are what exist in the Akhirah. Jannah and nar. And the reckoning, ayyuhal ikhwa, will be shadeed. On the basis of that, it is beneficial, ayyuhal ikhwa, for us to acquaint ourselves with something of the description of Jannah and something of the description of the Nar, the Jannah that we're aiming for and the Nar that we're trying to escape, that we familiarize ourselves with it and with the two of them and that we know 
that by the virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this ummah, this ummah has given, has been given by way of description of both destinations. That which has not been given to the people of the book. And indeed Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed this ummah by making this ummah the majority of the people of Jannah. Bless this ummah by giving this ummah this virtue. The Prophet sallallahu mentioned that Jannah are 120 rows. The inhabitants of Jannah, 120 rows, 80 of them will be from this ummah. And so Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed this ummah as being or from being the majority of the people of Jannah, blessed them with the best of the prophets, the best of the messengers, blessed them with the best of the books. And from the, the ayat that are present within the Quran and that which has been given to the Prophet wasallam, we have detailed description of that which is present or something from that which is present from the Jannah and the Nar. As far as the Nar, ayuhal ikhwa, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it a number of descriptions. As-Saqar, As-Sa'ir, Al-Jahannam, Al-Jaheem. All of these descriptions and names and titles return back to one and the same thing. Though from the people of knowledge are those who held that these were names for levels of Jannah. Some from the people of knowledge held that Jaheem is a level, Saqar is a level, Sa'ir is a level. But there is nothing in by way of evidence that indicates this categorization of these names of Jahannam into levels. And that this refers to that level, that one refers to that. Rather, what is most correct is that these are all names for one and the same thing. The fire that Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared for those who are kafirin, mushrikeen, those who are zalimeen and deserve it. And this fire, ayuhal ikhwa, much has been mentioned from its descriptions. Of course, ikhwan, the session that we have is short. And so it is difficult to uh, discuss from the detail that is present from the description of Jannah, the detail that is present from the description of Danar. But we will try and discuss something of its descriptions. Indeed, from the first of the things that we'll mention then concerning Jahannam, is that Allah Azza wa Jal has spoken concerning the gates of Jahannam. The gates of Jahannam, ayuhal ikhwa, that the kuffar will be paraded towards and they will be dragged towards. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that indeed those who disbelieved in their Lord, they will be brought to Jahannam Zumara in groups. Hatta ida jauha futihat abuabuha. Until when they reach it, its doors are opened. Waqala lahum khazanatuha. And indeed its custodians will say to them, Did not a warner come to you, warning you of this day of yours? As far as the description in this verse, in Surah Zumar, of how the kuffar will be brought to Jahannam, we have a similar description mentioned 
for the people of Jannah. وَسِيخَ الَّذِينَ Huh? وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ تَقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا فَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْتُمْ فَادْخُلُهَا خَالِدِينَ In relation to this verse, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions concerning the kuffar, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرَا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا While in relation to the believers, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ تَقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرَا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا We have a woe mentioned, يعني as it relates to the people of Jannah, not mentioned in relation to to the people of Jahannam. And the scholars of Tafsir mentioned that there is a benefit, a linguistic benefit, a balaghi benefit. And that is that Allah Azza wa Jal, when he discusses the people of Jannah, he mentions, Hatta ida ja'uha wa futihat abwabuha, until they reach at to it and its doors are open. That is, its doors are opened, waiting for them. In preparation for their arrival, the doors of Jannah will be opened for them, ready. Well, as it relates to the people of Jahannam, iyadu billah, Allah Azza wa Jal did not mention this wow, wa futihat abwabuha. Rather, Allah mentioned. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا Until they reach it, its doors are opened. The scholars they mention, scholars of tafsir, they mention that this has in it an indication of the fact that the doors of Jahannam will be closed until they reach it. And then when they reach it, in order to increase the torment upon them, and in order to increase the fear and the terror, its doors are not torn open until they arrive at those gates. When they arrive at the gates, Futihat Abuabuha, its doors are open and they see from its blaze and from its flames and from its heat and from its smoke and from its ferocity. Ayyuhal Ikhwa, the doors of Jahannam, Allah Azza wa Jal has informed us, are eight in number. Indeed Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, إِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ لَمَوْعِدُهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ And certainly Jahannam is that which they have been promised. It is a promised place for them all, yani for the kuffar and the mushrikeen. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, Laha sab'atu abwaab. Indeed, it has seven gates, seven doors. As far as Jannah, then Jannah has eight. And as far as Jahannam, then Jahannam has seven gates. From the people of knowledge, from the A'imma, and at the head of them, Ibn Abbas among the Sahaba, were those who held that the gates of Jahannam are tall, very tall. And that is on the basis that Allah Azza wa Jal, when He mentions, that indeed the nar will be alayhim mu'sada, yani it will be sealed and vaulted over them. That there are indications within these verses that the doors of Jahannam will be long. We'll come to the verses as we go on. The doors will be long, and some held 
that the locks of the doors will be long. But as far as the number of the gates of Jahannam, then they are seven in number. Similarly, as, as it relates, ayyuhal ikhwa, to the affair of the entry of those who enter Jahannam, then as we mentioned, there are some who hold that the doors will be long extended doors. And that is based upon the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, إِنَّهَا عَلَيْهِمْ مُعْصَدَ فِي عَمَدٍ مُمَدَّدَ That it will be locked and sealed over them, the whole of Jahannam, and then فِي عَمَدٍ مُمَدَّدَ In long extended Amad. The Amad in its origin in the Logha is a reference to a pillar. And so the scholars of Tafsir differ concerning what is intended by this Amadim Mumaddada. What is this extended pillar in Jahannam? After it is sealed over them and they are shot within Jahannam. What are these columns, if you like, that are mentioned here? From them, as we mentioned, uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said, that it certainly is a reference to the doors of Jahannam. That is, that the doors will be outstretched. And in one statement attributed to him, that it is a reference to columns of fire. And so the scholars of tafsir from among the tabi'een, from them were those who held that it was a reference to pillars of iron. Yani pillars of fire but made in, its, in their origin from iron. But they will be ablaze. And that will be a part of the punishment of the people of Jahannam. There is no doubt, Ikhwan, that as far as the gates of Jahannam are concerned, then... There are times before the people of Jahannam enter Jahannam that those gates will be opened and there are times when the gates are closed. From the time that the gates of Jahannam or from the times that have been mentioned that the gates of Jahannam are closed of course is the, from the beginning of Ramadan to the end of Ramadan. That Allah Azza wa Jal or the Prophet Sallallahu rather he mentioned that during Ramadan, when Ramadan enters, the doors of Jahannam are closed. He mentioned that the doors of Jannah are open, the doors of Jahannam are closed. He mentioned was Sufi that is Shayateen. And the Shayateen are, in, are restrained. And so there are times, Ayyuhal Ikhwa, even before Yawm Al-Qiyamah, that the doors of Jahannam are opened. The Prophet ﷺ informed us of the fact that the dunya receives something of the effect of Jahannam. He mentioned that indeed the, the Jahannam, it complained to Allah Azza wa Jal concerning the fact that it is consuming itself from its ferocity and in its intense heat. And so Allah Azza wa Jal permitted that Jahannam have two times or has two times of exhalation. An exhalation in the summer and an exhalation in the winter. And so the Heat that we find, the extreme heat, not so much perhaps here in the UK, but if you were to travel to the lands of the Muslimin, and if you were to travel to other regions that receive this extreme heat, then know, Ikhwan, that this heat is from the exhalation of Jahannam. That Allah Azza wa Jal 
has permitted for it to have. And likewise, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَهُوَ أَشَدُّ مَا يَكُونُ مِنَ الزَّمْحَرِيرِ And it is likewise a reference to the winter as extreme as it will get in cold. Which has in it an indication, ikhwan, of the fact that from the punishment of Jahannam and from the regions that are present within Jahannam, regions of extreme cold, Ayyuhal Ikhwah, this effect then is from the effects of the Jahannam that we receive and perceive in the dunya. The Prophet Sallallahu likewise informed us, just as Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned to us in the Quran, that the fuel of Jahannam are stones and men. فَاتَّقُوا nar. الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ As Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned, so fear the fire, the fuel of which is stones and men. Ayuhal al-ikhwa, Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما and others from the Mufassirun, they mention that the stones that will be fuel for the hellfire, are in actuality stones of sulfur. And this was the position of many of the Mufassirun. Sulfur being one of the most highly inflammable substances on earth. And it was stones of sulfur that were used when Sodom and Gomorrah were punished. And when Allah Azza wa Jal sent down upon them brimstone from the heavens and punished them and then raised their township into the heavens such that the angels could look into their homes and then sent their township back down and pelted it with fire and with brimstone. This brimstone is a reference to sulfur. Sulfur is the same substance that your matches are made of. And these stones, Ikhwan, of sulfur will be the fuel for Jahannam, intensifying its heat, increasing its severity. Allah Azza wa Jal, in numerous places, has mentioned this affair. Of, of stones being from the fuel of Jahannam. It should be mentioned that Al Imam Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala he said that most of the Mufassirun they mentioned that what is intended by these stones are so far. He said. But it is said that it includes five times of five kinds of torment that are not found within other stones. The first he mentioned it catches fire quickly. The second is that it has an unpleasant odor. The third is that it produces Abundant smoke, immense smoke. And the fourth is that it sticks to the flesh. And the fifth is that it is extremely hot when heated. When it is heated and it catches fire, then it is extremely hot. And that is as it relates to the sulfur that is in the dunya. What then of sulfur that is fuel for a fire that is 70 times hotter than the fire of the dunya? Regardless of how intense a flame you may have in the dunya, blue flame, a severe, intense blue flame, 
the fire of Jahannam is 70 times hotter. Regardless of how intense one may be able to kindle a flame in the dunya, the fire of Jahannam is 70 times hotter. And so its intensity, its vastness is immense. That which will indicate the vastness of Jahannam is what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has explained concerning its depth. The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam on an occasion was with, with some of his companions, and they ha heard a loud noise. And so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Do you know that what that sound is?" And so they said, "No, Messenger of Allah." He said, "Indeed, a rock was hurled into Jahannam." 70 years ago and it has just reached its bottom Ikhwan, it is said concerning things of large weight if you were to throw a large rock or a boulder from a cliff or for example human beings when they skydive that they reach speeds of between 100 and 150 miles per hour as they descend. And imagine then, something traveling at the speed of 150 miles an hour. And that is if we're going to say that that was its speed. May well have been faster. But if something were traveling at the speed of 150 miles an hour, how far would that item reach in a month, non-stop, then at a year, non-stop, 10 years, then imagine something traveling as long as you have been alive. Non-stop. You're able to sit down and recollect things that happened last week, last month, a few years ago. 10 years ago. 20 years ago. Or remember those things that occurred in your youth. When you were four or five. If you imagine that rock is still traveling, then double your lifespan, or the majority of you. Double your lifespan. It is still journeying. And then add perhaps another 10 or 15 years until it reaches its bottom. Ayyuhal Ikhwa, depth and vastness that is difficult to conceptualize. That is as far as its depth is concerned. We are not acquainted with its length and its breadth. That is a mention of its depth. The vastness then is something that occurs, Ikhwan, in numerous texts. Just as the intensity of its fire. <coughs> the Prophet Sallallahu after or on top of informing us of the fact that Jahannam is 70 times hotter than the, than the fire of the dunya, he was likewise given verses that indicate that from the severity of the fire is not just its flames. But from its severity is its wind. And the heat that it lets off. The wind, the violent wind that comes from it. And if you add Ikhwan to the fact that. The fire of this dunya. 
that includes and incorporates any single thing that exists in this dunya now that has flame or that has heat. <clears throat> and so, if you imagine that the sun with its intensity and the moon added to it will both be thrown into the hellfire on the day of judgment. And the intensity of the sun is nothing in comparison to that which is present from what has been mentioned from the hellfire. Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal has informed us وَأَصْحَابُ الشِّمَالِ مَا أَصْحَابُ الشِّمَالِ فِي سُمُومٍ وَحَمِيمٍ وَظِلٍ مِّنْ يَحْمُومٍ Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the companions of the left يعني the people of Jahannam who will inform you about the companions of the left they will be in intense and fierce hot wind and boiling water and shadows of black smoke that their shade ayyuhal ikhwa will be the shadow of the flames of jahannam the shadows themselves have intense heat the shadow that we conceptualize in the dunya is a shadow that ordinarily is cooler, shade that is ordinarily cooler than that which is outside of the shade. Rather, the shade of Jahannam comes from its huge and intense flames, and it too is intense in heat, as is the wind that comes from it. Similarly, ayyuhal ikhwa, from that which we have been informed of concerning <clears throat> the Jahannam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us <clears throat> in a hadith, the hadith of Abi Hurairah that was collected by Imam Tirmidhi and others, that on the day of resurrection, a neck will stretch forth from hellfire. And it will have two eyes that it will see with and two ears that it will hear with and a tongue by way of which it speaks. And it will say that I have been appointed to take care of three types of people. Every arrogant tyrant and every person who called upon a deity other than Allah and the musawwireen and those who make pictures. And this hadith, Sheikh Nasir al-Din al-Albani graded it sahih in sahih Sunan al-Tirmidhi. The hellfire then, it addresses it sees, it hears, and indeed, from its statements, is that it will inform concerning who it is and has been created to deal with. In relation then, to its speaking, Al-Imam Ibn Jarir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned a narration of Ibn Abbas who said that a man will be dragged towards the hellfire and the hellfire will shrink into itself. And Allah Azza wa Jal will say, what is wrong with you? And it will say that he is seeking refuge with you from me. And so Allah Azza wa Jal will then respond, that then release my slave. 
And so, the Jahannam, because of the slave seeking refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal from it, one who deserved to enter into it, but he sought refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal, this will cause the hellfire يعني, to pull away. And so Allah Azza wa Jal will address the hellfire what is wrong. And it will say, though he knows best, and it will say that he has sought refuge in you from me. And so Allah Azza wa Jal will say, then release my slave. A mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal. But the issue here is that the hellfire will speak. And the hellfire will see individuals. And indeed, that is something that is established in numerous ayat and in numerous ahadith. Similarly, from that which relates al -ikhwa, to the description of the hellfire, is that which is related to what has been mentioned concerning its beverages and its drinks. One of them has previously been mentioned, that is Hamim. Yani, that they will receive, the people of the hellfire will receive Hamim. Yani, that they will be punished with boiling water. Some ayat indicate that that boiling water, يُصَبُّ ala ru'usihim will be poured over their heads and that it will cause them to melt it will cause their skins to melt that such that initially when they are asked for drinks in the hellfire and they are given from this hameem it will disfigure their faces initially some ayat indicate that they will have disfiguration that will resemble a smile. They will appear to be smiling. When in actuality it will be disfiguration from Hamim. Then it will be poured over their heads. And that will cause them to melt. Similarly, from the drinks of the people of Jahannam. Is that they will be given Sadid. And Sadid is the pus from the wounds of the people of Jahannam and from the private parts of the people of Jahannam that this is what they will be made to drink when they are punished and they will be extremely thirsty. They will ask for something to drink. And this is from the drinks that they will be served. This sadid wal iyadu billah. Similarly, that they will be given muhul. This muhul, Abu Sa'id al Khudri, he makes mention of a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu wasallam, who said that it is like boiling water. Hadith that occurs in the Sunnah of Imam al Tirmidhi. Afwan, it is like boiling oil. The sadid, it is like boiling oil. And when it is brought near to a person's face, the skin from his face will fall off. He mentions, as it occurs similarly in the narration of Ibn Abbas, he mentioned that it is like very thick oil. And so here the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that it will cause the skin to come fall off from them. And that is in accordance with the statement of Allah. Allah mentions every time their skin. <coughs> Every time their skin is burnt from them, we will replace it with fresh skin. 
that they may taste the punishment. And in that is an indication, ikhwan, and a mu'jizah from the mu'jizat of the Qur'an. Because of the fact that, the, that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions every time their skin is burnt off, we will replace it with fresh skin. That they may taste the punishment. And what is established, ikhwan, is that the nerve endings where pain is felt is beneath the skin. And so, if one has a burn in the dunya, that is a severe burn, a third degree burn, مثلاً, one of the first things that the doctor will ask is, can you feel anything there? If I do this, if I touch it here, can you feel it? Because there is an area where the nerve receptacles, they end. And then one does not feel that which is below that region, below that area. And that is beneath the skin. Allah Azza wa Jal then mentions, every time the skin is burnt tough, we replace it with fresh skin. Adab, That they may taste the punishment. That they may feel it. It is not something, ikhwan, that will be momentary and then it will end. As is the case, for example, with someone that is in a fire. If someone is burning in a house fire, there are a number of seconds before their life ends. This is something that is eternal, ayyuh al Never ending. Allah Azza wa Jal likewise informs us that from the food of the people of Jahannam is Zakkum, or they will be given food from the tree of Zakkum. And Zakkum is a tree that has fruit like the head of devils. This fruit, when one approaches it, he will find the horrific, yani a fruit that is horrific to look at. Resembling and looking like the head of devils. And that will cause their insides to burn. Likewise, from that which Allah Azza wa Jal has informed us in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, is that Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared for them on top of these varying types of punishment, chains and fetters. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, Inna a'tadna lil kafirina salasila wa aglalan wa sa'ira that we have prepared for the kafirin salasil chains, colors, and a burning blaze. And so they will be chained, colored, on top of that which they will be, be experiencing. Chains, colors of fire. Chains that will torment them. And on top of all of this, ayyuh al there are external factors within the hellfire that will, ex will increase its horrific nature. From those factors is that which is established in a hadith that was declared sahih. By Sheikh Nasir al-Din al-Albani in Sahih al-Jami' Al-Dhubabu Finnar That from the punishment of the hellfire Is flies That flies, ayyuh al-ikhwa Are additionally From the punishment of the people of the hellfire Horrific Horrible torment, horrible destination that will never end. They will seek from the custodian of the hellfire Malik to intercede with your Lord, to grant us mercy. And that Malik will respond, Inna kum that indeed you will remain within it. 
you will remain herein. A'mash rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned that it has reached me that between the supplication and the request of the people of the hellfire and them receiving the response from Malik, the angel who is the custodian of the hellfire, there will be a period of a thousand years. Between them requesting and them being responded to. And know brothers and sisters, that from those who will enter the hellfire, there will be a portion of believers whose evil deeds outweigh their good deeds and who were not overcome by the intercession of those who interceded and did not have that which will cause them to escape the hellfire from the believers of those who will enter it. This punishment that we've been describing, Ikhwan, from the believers are those who will enter it. Each and every one of us must fear for ourselves. It is a possibility. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to save us. There is a possibility that some of us could enter. That some of us may receive something of that punishment. And thus brothers and sisters, when we enjoin the good and we forbid the evil, and when we carry out the acts of ibadah that we carry out, it is seeking distance from the hellfire. And it is seeking something of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal that perhaps from our deeds that Allah Azza wa Jal was pleased with something of them. And that caused him to envelop us with his mercy and save us from this punishment. Know, ayyuhal ikhwa, that all of those who are punished in the hellfire, then they will ultimately exit. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us of the affair of the last person to enter or to exit the Jahannam from the believers who ultimately will be the last person to enter Jannah. The Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned as occurs in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Indeed, the last person to enter Jannah will be a man who will be walking alter alternately and staggering and will be touched by the fire. Yani that he will be dragging himself. And then sometimes he will walk, sometimes he will stagger, and sometimes he will be touched by Jahannam. Once he exits the hellfire, he will turn his face to it, and he will say, Alhamdulillah, and glory and blessed be he who has saved me from you. Then he will continue that indeed Allah Azza wa Jal has given me something that he did not give to the earlier or the later generations. This will be what he will perceive. Then a tree will appear before him and he will say, supplicating to Allah Azza wa Jal, Oh my Lord, Allow me to come close to this tree that I may enjoy from its enjoy of its shade and of its water. And so Allah Azza wa Jal will respond to him by saying, O oh son of Adam, if I grant you this, then will you ask me for something else? And so he will respond, No, my Lord. And then he will plead and say, that he will ask Allah Azza wa Jal for nothing. And so Allah Azza wa Jal, he will excuse him and he will grant him that which 
he has asked for. And then while he's in that state, another tree will appear before him. A tree that is better than the tree that he is under. And so he will not be able to hold his patience. He remains patient for as long as he can. Then he's not able to hold his patience. And so he says, oh my Lord, bring me near to this tree. So that I may drink from its water and enjoy its shade. And I will not ask you of anything else. And so Allah Azza wa Jal will say, O oh son of Adam, did you not promise me that you will not ask anything else of me? And so he will say, that if I bring you closer to this tree, will you ask for more? And so the man will pledge and plead. And he will say, I will not ask for any more, O oh Allah. O oh my Lord, I will not ask for anything else. And so, He's brought to that closer to that tree. And he remains under its shade and drinks from its water until he sees a third tree by Jannah. And so, when he sees this third tree, and it is better than the first two, the man will say, Oh my Lord. Bring me closer to this tree so that I may enjoy its shade and its water and I will not ask of anything else. And so Allah Azza wa Jal will say, O son of Adam, did you not promise that you will not ask anything else? And so he will respond, Yes, O Lord. <clears throat> yes, O Lord. But that which I see, I am unable to remain or to hold patience. And so, he will be brought closer to that tree that is by Jannah. And then, when he is by the tree, and benefits from its shade, he will hear the voices of the people of Jannah. And he will hear them enjoying. And he will hear from their bliss. And he will hear that which they are in. And so he will say, after holding patience, he will say when he can bear it no longer, Oh my Lord, please admit me into it. And so Allah Azza wa Jal will say, O oh son of Adam, O oh son of Adam, Certainly if I enter you into it, what else will you ask me for? And so Allah Azza wa Jal will continue. Would it please you if I gave you in Jannah the dunya and that which is like unto it? And so he says, Atastahzi ubi. وَأَنْتَ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ He will say, oh, oh Lord, do you ridicule me? And you are the Lord of all of the worlds. And so Allah Azza wa Jal will say, Indeed, for you is that, and ten times it's like. That is granted to you, and ten times it's like. And thus, Ikhwan, the lowest person, in Jannah will receive that which is ten times the likes of this dunya. Ayyuhal ikhwatul kiram, what is it that this individual saw? What is it that caused him to not be able to hold patience any longer? What is it that caused him to desire that which he desired. Indeed, ayyuhal ikhwa, it is Jannah, arduha samawat wal ard, 
Jannah, the expanse of which is like the heavens and the earth, prepared for the muttaqeen. Jannah, that Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned concerning in that hadith Qudsi, a'dadtu li'ibadi as-salihin ma la aynun ra'at wa la udhunun sami'at wa la khatar ala qalbi bashar. He said, indeed, I have prepared for my righteous servants that which no eye has seen and no ear has heard, which indicates that sounds are from the bliss of Jannah. From the bliss and the reward of Jannah are things that the people of Jannah will hear. That will be a reward for them. وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ بَشَرْ And it has not occurred to the heart of any individual. As we mentioned previously, the gates, ayyuhal ikhwa, of Jannah are eight in number. Prophet ﷺ mentioned, whomsoever makes wudu, as a cousin hadith of Umar and others, whosoever, whomsoever makes wudu, and thereon after says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh, Futihat lahu abwaabu al-jannati al-thamaniya Yadkhulu min ayyuhasha He said That whomsoever says after he makes wudu Ashhadu an la ilaha inna Allah Wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh The eight doors of jannah are opened for him And he may enter from any of them he pleases. And so the people that Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed with Jannah after crossing the Sirat and after being assembled upon the Qantara, upon the plain outside of Jannah, that no one is able to leave until they settle their disputes. And after all of the disputes are settled, and Allah Azza wa Jal permits the first drove from the droves of the people of Jannah to enter Jannah. And after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he seeks permission for the doors of Jannah to be opened and for entry into Jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, آتي باب الجنة فأستفتح فيقول الخازن من أنت فأقول محمد فيقول بك أمرت أن لا أفتح لأحد قبلك. He said that I will come to the doors of Jannah and I will seek for them to be opened, opened in preparation for the people of Jannah. And so the custodian of Jannah will say, Man Ant, who are you? And I will say, Muhammad. And he will say, It is you that I have been commanded not to open its gates for anyone before you. And so the gates of, J- of Jannah will be open. And then the first of the droves of those who will be admitted into paradise will be brought to Jannah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he informed us of how that occurred. Just as Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned in the ayah that we mentioned previously. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْطُمْ فَادْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ 
when the first group from the people of Jannah will be brought to it. Hatta ida ja'uha. Until they reach its gates. Wa futihat abwabuha. And they will find its doors open. Wa qala lahum khazanatuha. And its custodian will say, Salamun alaykum. Tibtum. Indeed, you were tayyib. You were good. Fadkhuluha khalideen. Enter it then forever. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Yadkhulu awwalu zumratin il jannah. He said that the first zumra, or the first group, will be brought to jannah and they will be made to enter jannah. He said that their wujuh, or their faces, will be like the qamar, laylat al badr. They will be like the moon when it is full. And he said that they will be 70,000 in number. And they will enter Jannah. Dukhula rajulin wahid. They will enter and cross the threshold of Jannah together. Like the entering of one man. So they will be in a rank. And each of them will enter Jannah. And step over the threshold of Jannah. At the same time. And the angels will rush towards them. The Khadana. And their servants. Those youth. Who Allah created in Jannah. Resembling pearls. They will rush towards them. Greeting and welcoming them. Salamun alaykum. Indeed you have done well. They will congratulate them as they enter Jannah. Dukhul rajulin wahid. With the entry of one man. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he informed us of the fact that the first meal that they will be given is the liver from a fish, naturally from the fishes of Jannah, the liver of a fish that will be prepared for them, a meal to welcome them as they enter. As far as the affair ikhwan of the first of the individuals to enter Jannah, from them are those who will enter after reckoning. But from them are those who will enter without reckoning. As the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned 70,000 who will enter Jannah بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ وَلَا عَذَابٍ Without punishment or reckoning. And in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned <coughs> that with each of those 70,000, with each one of them, there will be 70,000. And a further narration mentions that Allah Azza wa Jal from His mercy will add three handfuls of individuals on top of those who will enter without hisab or adab. Not even reckoning, ikhwan. Straight to Jannah. Straight in, straight entry. Wallahi ni'mah, ikhwan. We ask Allah Azza wa to make us from them. Immediate entry into Jannah, not even hisab. Not even reckoning. While others will sweat and others will have to give account, these individuals straight into Jannah. Similarly, from that which the Prophet wasallam, from that which he has informed us, <coughs> just as Allah Azza wa Jal 
has mentioned in the Quran, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ That no soul will know what is prepared for them from the things that their soul, their inner souls desire. No soul knows. Similarly, we should know that there is nothing in Jannah from the things that have been mentioned in the dunya that are the same as Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma mentioned except in name. Nothing from the things of Jannah are the same, sorry, nothing from the things of the dunya that are in Jannah are the same as those things in the dunya except in name. By way of their names, we can conceptualize, we know what such and such a fruit is. We know what milk and honey is. But they are, they are not the same. There is no comparison. These are just so we can conceptualize that which is present from the bliss of Jannah. That which we will mention then, Ikhwan, from the affairs of Jannah and from that which Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have informed us concerning Jannah and the people of Jannah. The first issue that we will mention <clears throat> is that the characteristics of the people of Jannah have been described by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they will be youthful some narrations mention that they will be the same age as Isa ibn Maryam. But they will be youthful. And from that which enhances their youthful appearance is that they will have no beards. They will have no facial hair. In that regard, we have the hadith of Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, who mentioned that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Indeed, the people of Jannah will not have bodily hair or beards. And they will have natural kuhl upon their eyes. Their youth will never end. And their garments will never wear out. In the hadith, Shaykh al-Bani declared it sahih in Sahih Sunan al-Tirmidhi. Similarly, as we mentioned, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described the people of Jannah as having the characteristics of certain of the certain prophets and messengers. From those characteristics, we have that which is established in the hadith of Al-Miqdam ibn Ma'adi Karib, who mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, there is no one that dies as a martyr or of one as a miscarried fetus or as an elderly person. And all people are between these two. There's no one that dies as a miscarried fetus or as an elderly person. And everyone, there is no one except that he is between those two. Except that he will be raised 33 years of age. If he's from the people of Jannah, then he will be upon the stature of Adam. And he will have the form of Yusuf. And he will have the heart of Ayyub. And whosoever is from the people of the fire, then they will be enormous and tremendous in size like mountains. And that is an affair that we didn't mention concerning the people of Jahannam. That the Prophet ﷺ indicated that they will be huge in size. And that the distance between their shoulders, shoulder blades or shoulder to shoulder will be three days journey. And that the Mawlatuth of the Kafir in Jahannam will be like unto Mount Uhud. 
And anyone who has been to Medina and has seen Mount Uhud will know that Mount Uhud even resembles a Mawla Tooth. The shape of Mount Uhud is resemblant to a Mawla Tooth. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that the Mawla Tooth of the Kafir in Jahannam will be like Mount Uhud. But as far as the believers are concerned, then they will have the stature of Adam who is 66 cubits and will have the form of Yusuf <coughs> who was given half of beauty and he will have the heart of Ayyub. Similarly, the Prophet ﷺ informed us of the servants that the people of Jannah will receive. It occurs in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As that the Prophet ﷺ said, Indeed the lowest of the people of Jannah in station, and pay attention to this beautiful hadith that will indicate to you the bliss of Jannah. He mentioned indeed the lowest of the people of Jannah in station will have a thousand servants. I'll say it again. The lowest of the people in Jannah, in station, will have a thousand servants busily serving him. Each servant will be carrying out a duty different to that of the other. Each servant will be carrying out a duty different to the duty carried out by the other. A thousand servants. He mentions, then he recited the ayah, and if you were to see them, and if you were to see them, you would consider them lu'lu and manthura. You would consider them scattered pearls. Yani that they would look and they resemble pearls in the manner in which Allah Azza wa Jal has created them in beauty. Yani the beauty of the servants that Allah Azza wa Jal has created for the people of Jannah. <coughs> Similarly, we have that which indicates that in Jannah, there are not only rivers, but there are likewise seas. And those seas in Jannah are in many cases the origins of some of the rivers that flow through Jannah. In that regard, we have the statement of the Prophet Sallam uh, that was collected in a narration that was narrated by Hakim ibn Muawiyah al qushayri who said, narrating from his father, who said that I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, in Jannah, there is an ocean of water, an ocean of milk, an ocean of honey, and an ocean of wine. And then the rivers of Jannah emanate from them. And that no doubt is in accordance with the statement of Allah. مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وُعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ Indeed the example of the Jannah that the Muttaqoon have been promised. فِيهَا أَنْهَارٌ مِنْ مَاءٍ غَيْرِ آسِنٍ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِنْ خَمْرٍ لَذَّةٍ لِلشَّارِبِينَ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِنْ لَمَنٍ لَمْ يَتَغَيَّرْ طَعْمُهُ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِنْ عَصَلٍ مُصَفَّى Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned the example of the Jannah that the Muttaqeen have been promised in it are rivers of water that, do not, that does not change and rivers of milk that does not go stale. Yani beautiful purified milk. And rivers of wine. Ladatin lisharibin. Exquisite to taste. And that do not intoxicate. 
and rivers of asal and musaffa, rivers of purified honey. And so the Prophet ﷺ in this hadith established that which is present within this verse. That indeed the rivers of Jannah emanate from the seas of Jannah. And so there is an ocean of honey, an ocean of milk, an ocean of wine, and an ocean of water. Similarly, the lake that the Prophet ﷺ was given... That Allah, the Prophet ﷺ gave the Prophet, Allah Azzawajal gave the Prophet the Hawd on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. The origin of the Hawd is a river in Jannah known as Al-Kawthar. The Prophet ﷺ informed of the fact that the Hawd has two channels that lead from Al-Kawthar, the Hawd on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. It has two channels coming from Al Kawthar, one of silver and one of gold. Those two channels lead to the Hawd. But the origin of the water of the Hawd is the, lay, is the river Al Kawthar that the Prophet ﷺ was given in Jannah. As far as the trees of Jannah, ayyuh al ikhwa then certainly the trees of Jannah, they are immense and numerous in number. But there is another narration before we finish a discussion of the rivers. There is a narration wherein the Prophet ﷺ described the difference between the rivers of the dunya that we know and the rivers of Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, who said, perhaps you will presume that the rivers of Jannah are entrenched into the earth as the worldly rivers are. He said, no. By Allah, they flow upon the surface of the ground. One of its banks is made of pearl, and another one of its another of its banks is made of ruby. Its soil is made of adfar musk. And so I asked, what is adfar? He said, it is pure and unmixed. And so the rivers of Jannah, they flow across the surface of Jannah. And of course, the surface and the soil of Jannah is of misk. And some narrations indicate za'faran of saffron, of musk. And so they flow across the surface and one is able to take from them as one pleases. As far as the trees of Jannah, ayyuh al ikhwa, then there are a number of ahadith describing its trees. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as occurs in the hadith of Abi Sa'id al Khudri, he said that indeed in Jannah there is a tree the like of which a proficient, skillful, fast rider will journey for a hundred years, la yaqta'uha, and he will not cross it. And the hadith occurs in Sahih Bukhari and in Sahih Muslim. Likewise, in a hadith that was collected by Imam Al-Tirmidhi and was declared Sahih by Sheikh Nasir in Sahih Al-Targhib, the Prophet wasallam he said that there is no tree in Jannah except that its trunk is made of gold. No tree in Jannah, except that its trunk is made of gold. Similarly, Al-Imam Ibn Hibbani collects a hadith, when a Jewish man approached the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and said, O oh, Abu Qasim, do you not claim that the people of Jannah will eat and drink in Jannah. Are you not saying that the, do you not say that the people of Jannah will eat and drink in Jannah? And so the Prophet wasallam, he said, Yes, by him in whose hands is the soul of Muhammad. <coughs> Indeed, one of them will be given the strength of 100 men. And this indicates, Ikhwan, to 
the affair of the fruits and eating from the fruit and drinking in Jannah. And another affair that is mentioned, he said that each and every one of them will be given the strength of 100 men for eating and for drinking and for sexual relations. Each and every one of them will be given the strength of 100 men for eating, drinking, and sexual relations because sexual relations without doubt ayyuhal ikhwa is from the bliss of jannah and is from the uh, reward uh, and from uh, the happiness of jannah and so the man said but the one who eats and drinks he needs to answer the call of nature but there will be nothing harmful or unpleasant in jannah and so he eats and drinks. So how does he answer the call of nature? The Prophet ﷺ responded, answering the call of nature for one of them will be through perspiration that will exit their skin with the fragrance of musk and then their stomachs will be emptied and become lean. Similarly, the Prophet Sallallahu in relation to a discussion of the trees of Jannah. The Prophet Sallallahu as occurs in the hadith of Sulaim ibn Amir. He said that the companions of the Messenger of Allah, they used to say, Indeed Allah used to benefit us by way of the Bedouin who would come with their questions since they were prohibited from asking abundant questions. And so they used to say, we used to love when the Bedouin who didn't know would come and ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam questions. We could benefit. He said, and so a Bedouin Arab approached one day and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, indeed Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned a harmful tree in Jannah. But I did not perceive that there would be in Jannah a tree that could be harmful to its possessor. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, and what is that? And so he said, that is the cedar tree. And so he said that the cedar tree, it has harmful thorns. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, didn't Allah Azza wa Jal say that they will be thornless low trees? And then he mentioned Allah Azza wa Jal will remove their thorns and will put in the place of each thorn fruit. And it will indeed produce fruit. Each fruit will blossom having 72 colors. Each color will have a different flavor and no color will resemble the other colors that we possibly have never seen in the dunya just the fruit 72 colors each color is of a different flavor as we mentioned earlier <clears throat> sound is from the bliss of jannah that which will establish that is the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu. The previous hadith, Ikhwan, as we mentioned, was collected <coughs> by Sheikh Nasir in Sahih. At targhib or was declared Sahih rather by Sheikh Nasir in Sahih. At targhib was collected by Ibn Abi Dunya. Uh, as far as the sounds that are present in Jannah, from the sounds of Jannah are those sounds, Ikhwan, that will cause bliss and uh, will be exquisite to hear. Prophet Sallallahu mentioned as occurs in the hadith of Abi Huraira, indeed in Jannah there is a river, the length of Jannah. In Jannah there is, there is a river that crosses the length of Jannah. Along both of its banks, there are maidens standing facing each other and they will sing in the most beautiful voice that the creation has heard. To the extent that they will not believe, yani the inhabitants of Jannah, 
They will not believe that there is a, ple a pleasure in Jannah like it. Yeah, there's nothing better than this sound that they're hearing. And so we said, Oh, Abu Huraira, what is that singing? And so he said, If Allah wills, it will be tasbih and it will be tahmeed. Yani saying subhanallah and saying alhamdulillah and glorifying and praising Allah Azza wa Jal. Exalted and praised be He. Collected by Imam Al Bayhaqi and was declared Sahih by Sheikh Al Albani in Sahih at Targhib. As far as riding beasts in Jannah. Yani we're acquainted with the fact that they will have silk and brocade. We're acquainted with the fact that they will recline uh, in Jannah uh, and will relax in Jannah. We are acquainted with something of the food of the people of Jannah. But riding beasts, will they have riding beasts? Upon the authority of Abi Huraira, who said that a Bedouin Arab came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, indeed I love horses. Will there be horses in Jannah? I love horses. Will there be horses in Jannah? <clears throat> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you enter Jannah, a horse made of ruby with two wings will be brought to you. And you will be carried upon it and it will fly with you in Jannah wherever you wish. You want to go and see uh, such and such to see how he's getting on? You want to go and visit such and such? Such and such a brother who passed away many years ago. Where is he? All of that is possible with the red stallions of ruby that Allah Azza wa will bless the people of Jannah. Uh, likewise, Ikhwan, from the affairs that will intensify the bliss of the people of Jannah is that the people of Jannah will not know night. Neither will there be sun. Neither will they sleep. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, النوم أخ الموت ولا ينام أهل الجنة He said that sleep is the brother of death. And indeed the people of Jannah will not sleep. They will recline and they will relax. But they will not sleep. Similarly, ayyuha al ikhwa a variant version of the same hadith, hadith the hadith of Sulaiman ibn Buraida, whose father said that a man asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are there horses in Jannah? And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, if Allah enters you into Jannah, then you do not wish, and you will not wish to be brought a stallion made of red ruby that will fly with you wherever you will, except that it will occur. As far as the people of Jannah desiring children. If they desire children. Yumkin. Huh? Prophet Sallam said as occurs in the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri. <clears throat> if the believer desires a child, yani in Jannah, and all of these are hadith, ikhwan, all of them are sahiha, declared sahih, Sheikh al-Albani, or occurs in one of the sahihain. He said, if the believer desires a child in Jannah, then pregnancy, childbirth, and the child coming of age, occurs fi sa'a yani 
This term, sa'a, is not a reference necessarily to an hour, but a, just a period. A period of short period of time. Yani, with immediate effect. Pregnancy, childbirth, and the child coming of age will occur fi sa'a. And the child is just as they desire. Not this rude, uh, misbehaving, just as they desire. Exemplary son, exemplary daughter. And that, Ikhwan, no doubt, is from the bliss of the people of Jannah. Of course, Ikhwan. There is not one of you males except that they are familiar with the females of Jannah and the women of Jannah. And know, sisters, that you too will have men in Jannah. But Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned and created specifically for the men of Jannah a particular type of woman. And that is... The women of Jannah, ayyuh al ikhwa, are two main types. We have the Hurul Ain, and they are the women that Allah Azza wa Jal that have created in Jannah that have never known the dunya. Again, the women that Allah Azza wa Jal have, has created in Jannah. That have never known the dunya. The ones that have love, extreme love for their husbands before they have even seen them. To the extent that they defend their husband in their absence. When his wife harms him in some way. She says that the Prophet ﷺ established, leave him. Leave him, may Allah fight against you. Verily, he is, a, he is a trust with you for a while. Then he will come to us. The women of Jannah that the Prophet ﷺ described in numerous ahadith. And we will mention some of that. But you should know. Ayyuhal ukht or ayyatuhal ukht, sisters, that the women of Jannah, that Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed with Jannah, are supe that is from the women of the dunya, not the women that were created in Jannah, the women of the dunya who enter Jannah. And who are rewarded with Jannah. That they will be superior in every way. Again. That they will be superior in every way. To the Hurul Ain That have been prepared for the believers in Jannah. And so if one desires the Hurul Ain. His love and desire for his wife in Jannah will far supersede that which has been present or that which is present for the Hurrain. And Imam Ibn al-Qayyim discusses this mas'ala in detail. But we'll mention something, ayuha al-ikhwa, from the affair of what has been mentioned concerning the women of Jannah. And this has in it what we'll be looking at is that which is connected to the women of Jannah from those women who were from the dunya who were enter Jannah. <coughs> no doubt you're acquainted with the fact that the best of them are four. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that the best of the women of Jannah are four. Khadija bint Khwailid, Fatima bint Muhammad, Maryam bint Imran and Asiya bint Muzahim, the wife of the Fir'aun. Uh, hadith was collected by Imam Hakim in his Mustadrak, and declared Sahiba Sheikh Nasir, 
in Silsilatul Ahadith al Sahiha. Concerning the hadith, Al Manawi, he mentions that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying the women of Jannah, and yani the best of the women of Jannah, he did not just say women, which indicates that they are more virtuous than even the Hurul Ain. Otherwise, it would be believed that he intended the women of, he only intended the women of this world. That is, they are superior even to the Hurul Ain. If the Prophet Sallallahu just said, the uh, women, yani the women of Ahlul Jannah is a reference to those who were from the dunya or in the dunya and were believers, carried out righteous deeds and entered Jannah. And so here, Al Manawi, he mentions the fact that the Prophet, وسلم, his statement indicates that it is a reference to them being superior to all women in Jannah. Which indicates that these four are superior to all of the women of Jannah. Uh, similarly, from their characteristics then, <clears throat> the first of the characteristics is that Allah Azza wa Jal, he will, he will purify them. That is, He will purify them of all that if anything that defiles them. And so whenever Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran, لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجٌ mutahara, That they have purified spouses, then this is a reference to that which was mentioned by Ibn Abbas and Ibn Mas'ud, who said that they will not have menses, neither will they defecate, neither will they urinate, nor will they break wind, or have mucus. None of those things uh, will come to the people of Jannah generally, but in specific to the women of Jannah. Similarly, from the characteristics of the women of Jannah is that Allah Azza wa Jal will recreate them. Inna ansha'na hunna insha'a ja'alna hunna abkara Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, and indeed, we will create them of special creation. So they will be the same person, and their husbands will know them, their friends will know them, but they will be recreated, and we will make them virgins. Yani their, virgin, their virginity will be returned to them. And they will be loving and playful with their husbands of equal age. Similarly, in relation to this statement that we will make them of special creation, Al Imam ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions that is, that we will renew their creation in the hereafter. After them being elderly in the dunya and having white secretion in their eyes due to old age, they will become virgins, young, elegant, beautiful, and playful with their husbands. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, he said, he intends here, Adamiyat, yani that this verse is a reference to Adamiyat, yani women from the son of, from the children of Adam, Adamiyat, that is the women of the dunya, since some held, yani he mentions that since uh, some of the, the Mufassirun held that is a reference to the Hurul Ain, and this was mentioned by Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Similarly, that which will clarify this, ikhwan, is that the, the Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned, that elderly women on an occasion, he said, elderly women will not enter Jannah. And so upon hearing this, there was an elderly woman who began to cry. And so the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, inform her that on that day, she will not be elderly, rather that she will be youthful. For Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned, inna insha'ana hunna insha'a, that indeed we will make them of special creation. 
or we will يعني, recreate them of special creation as occurs in hadith uh, in the Sunan of an Imam al Tirmidhi <coughs> declared Hassan by Sheikh Nasir. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu anhuma he likewise mentioned concerning the statement Uruban Atraba. He said Uruban passionate and emotional with their husbands and their husbands are passionate and emotional with them. And so that which occurs between them is a lot of passion <laughs> and a lot of emotion between the spouses in Jannah. And that will never wane, Ikhwan. Not like in the dunya, but that is in the, yeah, in the first initial stages of the marriage, then eventually yeah, and it, it, it's her indoors. <laughs> Rather, the marriage and that which is between them of relation will continue, this passion and emotion will continue with them forever. Similarly, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or actually we'll mention the ayah, uh, that Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned concerning the women of Jannah, he referred to them as kawakiba atraba. This <clears throat> Kawaiba uh, Afwan, Kawaiba Atraba. Ibn Kathir mentions concerning this, uh, since it, it generally translates to the, there being gardens and graveyards and young, full breasted maidens of, e, of equal age. Ibn Kathir, he mentioned. <clears throat> that Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, and others mentioned concerning the statement of Allah, Kawaiba Atraba, that is, that they will be full breasted young maidens due to the fact that they will be virgins, loving and playful with their husbands of equal age. Since the people of Jannah will be of one age, uh, as has been clarified in the explanation of Surah Al Waqi'ah. And so Allah Azza wa Jal, regardless of how they were in the dunya, then Allah Azza wa Jal will make them full-breasted maidens. From their characteristic, likewise, is that they will have beautiful, clear skin. In that regard, we have the statement of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, who said that the Prophet Sallam, he said, describing the women of Jannah, that her marrow is visible beneath her skin and there will be no bachelors in Jannah. That is, everyone in Jannah will have a spouse or spouses. This statement that their marrow will be seen beneath their skin, the marrow, of course, is a reference to the innermost part of their bones. And that, Ikhwan, of course, it is not something we're able to envision Yani, it may sound strange to us in the dunya. You can see the middle, the inside of it. I may not want to see the middle of her bones. But of course, its manifestation in Jannah will be, Ikhwan, the utmost beauty. And it will not look strange. It will not look like something weird. Rather, it will be immense beauty. Yani, beauty that indicates, or beauty that is such you can even see through her skin and that which is beneath her skin is beautiful yani she's beautiful to the core allah azza wa jal versus jannah similarly from the characteristics uh, of the people of jannah and this is from the beautiful characteristic Ikhwan, I'm, I do apologize on us from 5 to 12. Now, there's so much to mention, Ikhwan. A topic like this, yani, one lie. We could speak about this all day. From the characteristics, we'll round up, inshallah. From the characteristics of the people of Jannah, ayyuh al ikhwa after Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed them with beauty, blessed them with fair looks and beautiful skin, blessed the women and transformed them, blessed the men and transformed them, given them trees, the fruit of which is low, yani low hanging fruit. As they recline, Juan, they don't have to climb anything. Uh, some narrations indicate that the fruit of the trees will come down to them if they desire it. Anything they 
think of, that they desire, will appear before them. Their vessels of gold reclining. They will have uh, garments of silk and heavy brocade. Everything that they will have, ayyuh al will be nothing but the most exquisite, beautiful, honorable, noble reward and garment and castles, lofty mansions, يعني, tents made of pearl. And the, as Imam Ibn al-Qayyim mentions, these, or the mention of khiyam and these tents that they will have of pearl, that there will be a man who will have a pearl, a, a, a tent of pearl, Yani of a hollowed out, beautiful, large tent of pearl. Beautiful abode. Unimaginable. And he will have four families within each, within, within the corners. Yani it would be 60 years journey, its expanse. He will have four families within one tent and each of them will not know of the other. The tents are other than the ghuruf, the ghuraf. Yani the tents are other than the, the lofty abodes, the mansions and the qusur, the castles and the mansions that they will have. That This is other than the tents. Just like now, we have individuals, mathalan, who has an istiraha. He has a large house and he also has an istiraha. He has a place, yani, you have it a lot, a lot in the uh, the lands of the Arab that they'll have the main house and then they'll have a small place uh, that is sometimes it is outside sometimes it is a bit of a distance away from the home but it has yeah and it is like a chalet that they go to they'll eat there they'll go with friends and we'll spend time in the istiraha we'll have a meal there and so on and in those tents are like unto the istiraha that people have in the dunya. It's another place. And you just imagine uh, as some people have a house and then they have the... Uh, huh? Like a villa or not on the outside the extension. Like an observatory, mathalan. You may have a large house. It has an observatory on the outside. Glass window you can see through. It's lovely. You probably go there have tea and a wood fire. The tent. The tent. That Allah Azza wa has mentioned from Pearl. Is not the abodes and the qusur and the mansions. And the apartments that they will also have. This is separate to that. It's just another place you may want to go and spend time and chill out in in Jannah, different to that which Allah Azza wa Jalla has blessed Ahlul Jannah with. But on top of all of this, ayyuhal ikhwa, then there is a souq and a marketplace that the people of Jannah will go to. It occurs in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhuma, radiallahu anhu, the Prophet he said, indeed in Jannah there is a market that will be att attended by the inhabitants of Jannah every Jumu'ah. Wherein a a breeze, every single Jumu'ah, forever. Wherein a breeze will blow upon them from the north. And it will blow on their faces. And upon their garments. And they will increase in good looks and beauty. This breeze come upon them look even better. He mentions, and they will return to their families. Who would also have become more good looking. And more beautiful. And their families will say to them, By Allah, you look better. You are more good looking. You are more beautiful. You are more handsome. And they will, since you left, and they will say, And you too are more beautiful and more good looking. Since you <coughs> have left out. And that is every Jumu'ah. Again, something that you can't envision, Ikhwan. Every single Jumu'ah. Forever, they become more and more beautiful. In the dunya, beauty generally has a had. It has a limit. Yani, a, a, a woman who is beautiful. Yani, there are levels of beauty. 
and those women ordinarily compete who is the most beautiful woman. And you hear about who is the most beautiful woman in the world. Who is voted or rated as the most beautiful woman in the world. And those who have beauty, they generally kind of all look the same for the most part. <laughs> generally levels of beauty, there isn't much of a gradient. Someone who's considered the most handsome man in the world currently. Generally, again, not much of a much less degree of difference. This one's no slightly different. He's got like the larger eyes, a bit broader shoulders. But generally, generally, there isn't much of a. But here, ayyuhal ikhwa, this beauty never ends and it is constantly on the increase. And it never reaches a stage where well, that's probably as beautiful as you're going to get. Every Jumu'ah, forever they become more and more and more beautiful every Jumu'ah forever impossible to imagine and to envision ask Allah Azawajal to make us from the people of Jannah that Allah Azawajal blesses us blesses our striving aids us in the dunya ikhwan, to follow the turuk and the path that lead to Jannah. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us to be from among those who enter Jannah bi ghayri hisabin wala adhab. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for us to cross the bridge over the Jahannam and causes us to drink from the hawd of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the like of which whoever drinks from it will never go thirsty again. And those and these issues and articles of Iman, they are, we believe in them for a reason. We believe in them for a reason, Ikhwan. We believe in them because these are realities that will occur. And our time in the dunya, Ikhwan, is short. And whomsoever passes away, as the people have of knowledge have mentioned فَقَدْ قَامَتْ قِيَامَتُهُ Whomsoever dies, then his qiyamah has begun. His qiyamah has begun. And so it is between now and death, ikhwan. That is all that we have. Ayyuhal ikhwan, don't waste the time that you have. Wallahi, it will shoot fast before you. Wallahi, ikhwan, those of you who are youth, <coughs> those of you who are youth, teenagers, early 20s, wallahi, your age will double before you know it. Before you know it, you're going to be 40. Before you know it, and so even if we're given long life, that long life will shoot before us. And if our life, Ikhwan, is not as long as the average lifespan, then that should be even more reason, which is possible, even more reason, Ikhwan, for us to utilize our time well in the dunya. And let us not be from those who regret, Ya Laytana, Ya Laytana, if only, woe is me, Rather, let us be like the likes of the companions of the Messenger of Allah and the Salaf of this Ummah, Amr ibn Dinar, who it was said concerning him, if it was said to him the angel of death is outside the door, there would be nothing that he could do to increase upon his good deeds. That type of striving, Ikhwan, the striving of the person who believes in this, the striving of the person who believes in this, Ikhwan. That is the type of striving we need to have. Because indeed, our days are numbered. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa fikana wa iyaakum lima yuhibbuhu wa yardah wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa akhid da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.